The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day. And the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus did not speak to them except in parables. Yes, this was the form of teaching and communication Jesus used. And quite often, I think we misunderstand what parables are meant to do as we hear them. You see, we are people who like to solve problems. As we look at the parables of Jesus, we don't have to go far to find interpretations of these stories that seem to suggest parables are often presented as problems to be solved. And that once solved, they can offer us instructions for living. However, as Lutheran pastor Nadia Boltz Weber suggests, parables are not neat little moralisms dressed in narrative. They are meant to be swallowed whole. Parables are living things meant to mess with our assumptions and subvert things we never even thought to question. And as I've mentioned to you before, theologian Eugene Peterson says, Jesus' parables are like explosive narrative time bombs. We hear them ticking away, and we wonder about their meaning as they continue to go on ticking. We think maybe we finally have got it, yet it stubbornly continues to tick away and make us ponder. We walk away, but over the course of the next day or so, it still continues to tick, tick, tick away. And then all of a sudden, the truth Jesus meant to convey strikes home, and kaboom! When this ticking bomb of a parable explodes, we are surprised and almost overwhelmed with its implications. In today's gospel reading, Jesus is again using parable to convey meaning. Jesus is describing the reality of the coming kingdom of God, the reign of God that is unexpectedly breaking in upon us God's presence in this present world. God's dream for this world is very counter to the reality we live as we go about our daily lives within the context of our present culture. Jesus knows we cannot really understand what the kingdom is like all at once. Such understanding actually takes some time. It takes time to grow. So Jesus begins teaching about the coming reign of God by using parables that are meant to be explosive. His stories challenge the comfortable status quo, and they challenge our thinking as they turn our thinking inside out and upside down. Today's first parable about this unusual farmer who rather indiscriminately seems to sow seed upon the ground does not really make much sense from a rational point of view. This 
crazy farmer does not prepare the soil or tend it with fertilizer. He does not even water the seeds or pull out weeds. He just indiscriminately throws out the seed and waits to see what happens. The emphasis in this parable seems to be placed upon what or who causes the growth to occur after the seed hits the soil because the farmer simply goes about his life of sleeping and rising night and day. So what is this really about? Well, it might possibly be about the wonder of faith, or it might be about the need to be ready to bring in the harvest, or just maybe it is about our complete inability to control or dictate the coming reign of God that unexpectedly breaks in upon us in various ways, whether we or others believe or not. I have to say, this possibility leaves us unsettled and uncomfortable because it leaves us in a place where we are not in control. It leaves us vulnerable, and we do not like it. We don't like it when we see things like decline in the church. We want to build the church, build God's kingdom, and restore it to what we remember of days gone by. Yet the truth is, God's kingdom does come regardless of our efforts. God's kingdom cannot be manipulated by our attempts to control because God's kingdom can only be received. It is all gift. In a very real sense, the kingdom or reign of God is something that comes from outside of ourselves and grabs hold of us, whether we want it or not. It is all gift and not dependent upon us or anything we do. Now, that is to not say we don't have a responsibility. We do. But it is God who builds the kingdom, and it is Christ who builds the church. This is a difficult lesson for those of us in the church who are doers and problem solvers. It is difficult for those of us who have had such a hard time of letting go, for those of us with type A personalities who want to be in control and in charge of what is happening. Yet we are not responsible for making the church grow. That is God's work. We are not responsible for making sure everybody, quote, gets saved. That is God's work, and quite frankly, God has already done that. We are not responsible for making God's kingdom a smashing success. No. Our job, our calling, is to simply plant the seeds and trust God to do the work of growing the kingdom. We live in a world where people are so very afraid of losing control. And we have been taught and continue to teach others that in order to succeed, we must have a plan with well-defined outcomes and strategies for achieving those outcomes. We so desperately want to be able to measure our success. However, this is so very contrary to God's kingdom of grace. The work of grace, mercy, compassion, Peace and justice is the work that truly matters in life, and it follows a totally different outline than the plans and strategies we try to impose. All we are called to do is live God's grace, live the gospel, and share the good news of God's love for this broken, needy world. The next parable Jesus tells is about the mustard seed. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make 
nests in its shade. Now, if we really look at what Jesus is saying, we need to think about the mustard he is talking about. You see, the thing about mustard seeds is that while some varieties were used as spice and others medicinally, in general, they were considered at the very least pesky and often somewhat dangerous. Why? Because wild mustard is incredibly hard to control, and once it takes root, it can take over a whole planting area. That's why mustard would only occasionally be found in a garden in the ancient world. More likely, you would find it taking over the side of an open hill or an abandoned field. So knowing this, pick your favorite garden variety weed, crabgrass, dandelion, wild onion, That's pretty much what Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to. Oh, that part about the birds seeking refuge? Maybe it's meant as a comforting image. The birds finding shelter from the elements. Or maybe it suggests that once mustard shrubs take root, all kinds of things happen, including the sudden presence of undesirables. Looked at that way, Jesus' parable is a little darker, even ominous. As John Dominic Crossan puts it, the point, in other words, is not just that the mustard plant starts as a proverbial small seed and grows into a shrub of three or four feet or even higher. It is that it tends intends to take over where it is not wanted, that it tends to get out of control, and that it tends to attract birds within cultivated areas where they are not particularly desired. And that, said Jesus, was what the kingdom was like, not like the mighty cedar of Lebanon and not quite like a common weed, more like a pungent shrub with dangerous takeover properties something you would want in only small and carefully controlled doses, if you could even control it. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is... May these parables mess with your assumptions and subvert things you never even thought to question. May these parables stick in your mind like a ticking time bomb to go off at an unexpected time, and then when it finally explodes, may it overwhelm you with surprise and make you ever new. Amen.